Everyone who grew up before the 2010s or if your family was poor or not remembers these things, CRT TVs. They came in many shapes and sizes, some being small enough to sit in a chair, others being big enough to take up half the living room. They lasted for a long time too, from 1926 until the late 2000s, and around that time, most people made the switch to flat screen TVs, and for the sake of convenience, I'll be calling non-CRT TVs flat screen TVs. Yes, I know flat CRTs exist, but hardly anyone had those. Anyway, like I was saying, everyone I've talked to says they or their family made the switch to modern TVs around the mid to late 2000s, or at least the early 2010s, except for my family, that, or still is poor. We didn't get our first flat screen TV until 2017, and it was a small 16 inch TV, and while this is super embarrassing to admit, I didn't have my own flat screen TV until 2020. Yeah, I was still using this giant until around two years ago, and I even remember having to use this HDMI to AB converter to even play like my Switch games on it, and let me tell you, it doesn't look great. But there is a certain charm to these old behemoths, the static you'd feel when you put your hand on it. Uh, that, that dim humming noise, the blue screen, it's all so nostalgic. And a lot of people feel the same way, so much that there are whole communities who only game on CRTs. Not only for nostalgia, though, there are quite a few reasons why, when it comes to retro gaming, CRTs can be the best way to play them short of emulation. The first reason is how a large number of retro games were specifically designed to be displayed on an older TV. For instance, a lot of NES games have these weird lines on the top and bottom of the screen, and when it's displayed on a modern TV, you can see them pretty clearly, or even on my capture cards. Whenever I have to use NES footage, I always have to crop the sides, unfortunately. However, on my old TV right here, these lines are invisible. Another reason to own one of these things is the aspect ratio. These old TVs have a 4x3 aspect ratio, while modern ones have an aspect ratio of 16x9. Almost every older game are all made with a 4x3 ratio in mind, so if you want to play it on a newer television, you'll either have to set it by 16x9 and have the image be stretched, or you can set it by 4x3, but the only problem with that is there's going to be black bars on the side. Playing on a CRT makes it look great. There's no black bars to the sides, or at least not very big ones, and the image isn't stretched. When it comes to image quality, if you're using composite or S-video, it can also look much much better on a CRT, uh, since they are analog signals and they're meant for these kinds of screens. Well, modern screens are digital, uh, and when it's played on one, the TV has to convert the signal from analog to digital, which might decrease the video quality. Or, I think. You know, I really spent like five minutes looking this up. I might be wrong. Somebody correct me in the comments if I am. There are also a bunch of other factors on why retro games might look a bit better on an older television. Most of them are of the same principle. They were meant for it, and playing on a newer TV, well, it wasn't made for it, so it can look kind of weird. That's not all though, for many CRTs have certain video inputs that newer displays don't. S-Video and Component, and sometimes Composite, at least in really new TVs. But uh, almost all the flat screens I've run into, I'll have Composite, except for the newest of the new, but anyway. Um, you have S-Video, it's like composite, but it's a cleaner signal, and the colors are much nicer, and text looks sharper. However, this input has all but been eliminated from modern displays. It is more common on older plasma TVs, uh, so yeah, but component is much, much more common to find on flat screens than S-Video, and it's such a clean signal though that it looks awesome on modern TV, so to be honest, I wouldn't go out of your way to find a CRT with it because of how good it looks on a modern TV. Alright, now for some downsides of playing games on a CRT. First of all, the whole pixelated look, well it looks perfect for some games, doesn't look as good for others. They also generate a light buzzing noise that is nostalgic, although it can get a little annoying sometimes. Uh, and many times to switch between inputs and change settings, such as color or contrast, you need a remote. But if you don't have the remote anymore, well, good luck finding a replacement. Uh, but the main downside is how heavy they are and how much space they take up. These things weigh way more than you could ever imagine if you don't know how much they weigh. I remember my family having a giant one downstairs years ago. 
Like, it was big and it was good. It had S video and component, but when my dad got rid of it, he had to get my uncle and his friend to help him haul it out of our house, and it weighed probably a good 500 pounds or so. No joke. My point is, getting one of these things in your house can be a nightmare. If you buy one off of eBay, expect to pay $30 shipping. And if you don't have a car, buying one from a thrift store or garage sale is completely out of the question, unless you're, like, you get a really small one and you can lift quite a bit and you live pretty close by. And if you have done that, I have a lot of respect for you and please tell me your story in the comments. But thankfully, CRTs are really easy to find for pretty cheap, so finding them isn't the issue. As for me, I own two CRTs. I have one big one from the 90s that um, I think it used to be in my parents' downstairs living room until they got that big one and then it got moved to my room and then they have this smaller one from the early 2000s that my other uncle gave me. Uh, he gave it to his sisters a while back, but then they decided they didn't want it because they never used it because they didn't have any game systems or DVDs and stuff, so now it's all mine. This big Sanyo one is what I gamed on for most of my life until I was gifted this flat screen when I was a senior in high school in 2020. You can see it in some of my earliest videos before I got a capture card, so I filmed directly in front of it with the lights off. Now though, I only use it for NES games, since it only has one video input and that's composite, and also has only one audio port as well. Um, so I guess it's perfect for NES games in that regard. The RCA on the other hand isn't as big, but it has S-Video and two audio ports, making it perfect for anything with S-Video, like Yes and Yes and 64 and PS1, but it has some competition in this regard. This is a really small plasma TV my, that my grandparents used to have in their camper. It also has S-Video along with Component, although it has no HDMI. Since the screen is so small, the resolution um, being not that great isn't that big of a deal, so it's a close match between it and the RCA. I think the plasma handles colors a bit better, making certain games like Super Metroid look a bit more vivid, while uh, when it comes to 3D games like Super Metroid, or not Super Metroid, Super Mario RPG, I feel like it handles that a little better. So when it comes to retro gaming, is owning a CRT mandatory? No, it's not. If you're willing to spend the money, there are many solutions to make your old consoles look great on an HD TV, like RGB SCART cables and mods that can be used with upscalers to give a ridiculously clean image. It can look even better than it would on a CRT. Although this method is usually pretty pricey, for later systems like the GameCube, PS2, Xbox, and Wii, using component cables is typically good enough, and there are cheaper upscalers, like the RetroTink, that take composite or S-Video, or even component inputs, and do line doubling, creating a better image. There's stuff like the M-Classic, the Super 64, FrameMeister, and many, many more options that can make your games look great on an HD TV. But if you're strapped for cash, looking to revisit the past, and want to go authentic, getting a CRT might be the best way to go.